Hello biology class. Welcome back to a brand new unit. This one in green. It's called excretion. So um, we are essentially going to be talking about how we filter our blood, how we turn it into urine, and then how we get it out of our system. Uh, the first thing that we need to talk about though is metabolic wastes. And essentially metabolic wastes are the wastes that you make in your body just by living. So CO2 is an example of a metabolic waste. Uh, you make that a byproduct um, with your cells when uh, you use it for energy and then you need to breathe it out. So that is a waste that you need to get rid of and we found a very good way to breathe out CO2. But we are going to focus on the wastes uh, for the most part that are involved um, in the urinary system uh, with your kidneys uh, and the excretion system. So let's get into uh, the types of metabolic wastes first. Uh, metabolic wastes or excrements are substances that are left over from metabolic processes like cellular respiration so or anything else that goes on in your body uh, to make it work. Um, these are in surplus uh, so they might be we ha might have too many of them or they might be toxic. So those, for those two reasons, we need to get rid of them or excrete them. Uh, some of these substances include ammonia, urea, uric acid, uh, carbon dioxide, different vitamins and minerals. Uh, if you intake too much vitamin C, you will need to excrete it because you can only absorb so much. And there are many, many others, um, many different uh, organic molecules that uh, need to be filtered. We are going to focus, oh, let's talk about what does that first, sorry. So uh, all these metabolic wastes are filtered and excreted by the kidneys uh, as they are water soluble with the exception of carbon dioxide, which is eliminated through the lungs. So this is a, oh, it's not a regular kidney. Okay, so I thought I had a picture of just a regular kidney animated, obviously, but you can see that we've got chunks in here. So these should not usually be here. This is just a image that I took so it <laughs> off the internet. So this is the wrong one, but that's okay. These are kidney stones and these should not be here. Essentially, uh, the urine will filter into this area and go down the ureter and we'll get all into all that information uh, later in the unit. But this is uh, the kidney that would filter all of these wastes except for CO2. So nitrogenous wastes are the ones that are very, very important and the ones that are often most toxic. So nitrogenous wastes are compounds that animals need to get rid of that can contain nitrogen. These compounds are created from the breakdown of proteins. So uh, people that eat more protein or more meat generally have more nitrogenous wastes that will need to be uh, broken down and excreted. If you eat less meat, you'll generally have less of these, but proteins are what make it. So, you know, other high protein foods can cause you to have high nitrogenous wastes. But the nitrogenous wastes are ammonia, urea, and uric acid. Now, humans only deal with, uh, or only get rid of one of these. And I'll explain why as we talk about them here. So the first one is ammonia. This is a picture of the molecule. Uh, you'll notice that it has one nitrogen in it. That is a key feature of these molecules. So nitrogen or ammonia only has one nitrogen. Uh, it is highly toxic. It is very, very toxic. Ammonia, I don't know. Um, I'll tell you a, st a little story. When I was in high school, we were working with a little bit of ammonia in chemistry class and I made the mistake of sniffing it. Never sniff a chemical, but I made that mistake and my eyes immediately teared up. It is extremely toxic. Uh, and it was very, very painful. So stay away from it. Um, but it requires a large amount of water for dilution because it's very toxic. You can imagine like if something's very toxic and you add a lot of water to it, that makes it a whole lot less toxic. So um, animals that have constant access to fresh water excrete their nitrogenous wastes as ammonia. So examples would be like fish or tadpoles, essentially animals um, that live in water um, can get rid of their nitrogenous waste as ammonia because it is very, very dilute. It is more common in open circulatory system animals compared to closed circulatory system animals as nitrogenous waste can get built up in areas 
and if ammonia gets built up it's extremely toxic so it is um key points one nitrogen molecule and very toxic and you need a lot of water to dilute it the one that humans deal with is known as urea uh, you can see here that it's got two nitrogen molecules, and you might be thinking one nitrogen molecule is very toxic, two nitrogens should be more toxic, but that's not actually how it works this time. If we have two nitrogen molecules, it's actually less toxic than ammonia. So there's a key point there. Because it is less toxic, it requires less water to dilute it. So that makes sense. Something that's more toxic would need more water. Um, it's not as toxic. So we don't need as much. And generally, these, these are for animals that live on land but have access to water and excrete their nitro they excrete their nitrogenous waste as urea. That would be us. We live on land, but we have access to water. We should drink eight cups of water a day. Um, so we excrete our wastes as urea. And so we actually have to take the ammonia and turn it into urea. And that is a whole other process that could take several days to talk about. So you're lucky, we won't talk about it this time. Uh, again, humans and frogs would be some examples, um, but essentially key points, two nitrogen molecules, less toxic than ammonia, so you need less water to dilute it. And humans get rid of this nitrogenous waste. As you can see from key point three, oh, we're gonna continue on with urea, I'm sorry. <laughs> urea requires energy to build as it is a combination of two ammonia molecules. Um, so you could kind of see in the picture that if we, we had one uh, ammonia molecule here and one ammonia molecule here with a carbon and an oxygen between them. So it takes energy to get it to that place. Um, so we have to build urea in our body so that we can excrete it. And it usually happens very fast because we wanna get rid of the ammonia molecules. Uh, it's manufactured in the liver and then it's filtered and excreted by the kidneys. So that's one reason we say the liver and the kidneys filter your blood. Um, they both clean it, but the liver has a very different job than the kidneys. We will focus on the kidneys, I believe, in lesson three, um, but both work together here. So the liver makes the urea, and then it is filtered and excreted by the kidneys. And something that's interesting is a long time ago, don't worry about the year or the sky, um, a long time ago, this bro, discovered that he could make urea outside the body in a lab. And this was significant because this was the first time that uh, any scientist or chemist had made uh, a molecule that was also made by the body. So there was this theory that of, called vitalism, that only molecules um, that were made by the body, that was the only place they could be made. Uh, only living things could produce the chemicals of life. So in 1828, Frederick Wohler discovered that he could make urea. Um, so that contradicted this theory and it changed the way that people looked at chemistry and the human body um, for years to come. So it was a very, very significant um, discovery. But don't worry about his year or his name. Now we're gonna get to uric acid. So uric acid, as you can see here, contains four uh, nitrogen molecules. It doesn't really resemble um, ammonia at all and that's because it is much much more complicated to make um, but because it has four nitrogen molecules and it's built this way it has very very low toxicity so because it is such low toxicity there is no need to dilute it it is uh, just like a paste it is not at all toxic and you can touch it uh, it doesn't burn um, nothing like that so it can be stored for a very, very long time in the body being non-toxic. The animals that make this would be animals that live in a very dry climate uh, or that do not have access to water um, so that they can excrete their nitrogenous waste. So examples would be reptiles, things that live in the desert, or birds. Birds don't drink a lot of water. Some, but not a lot. Um, so they secrete or excrete their wastes through uric acid. Um, you've seen it before. This kind of looks like one of those S faces, I thought. That's why I picked it. But the white crystalline substance that you see um, in bird or lizard poop is actually urine. So uh, the white crystals part here, that's urine. That is uric acid, uh, bird urine. And then this part in here is the feces, uh, the brown green. 
So they say if you get pooped on by a bird, it's good luck. I don't know. I've been pooped on by a bird and nothing great happened to me the next day. But uh, decide for yourself. So these substances need to be removed through a process uh, like in your kidneys. But if you don't have working or uh, excellent working kidneys, um, sometimes dialysis is needed. So I'd like you to do some research on, the, on dialysis. Uh, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks so much.